So how many of you have a console at home that looks like this? The original NES, the Super Nintendo, the Dreamcast are all notorious for getting this ugly, dingy, burnt look to their beautiful gray plastic. Well, today, Dr. Mott is here and he's gonna tell us why this happens and how we can fix it on today's episode of Dr. Mod's Lab. So first off, what is this anyways? When your console turns all old and crusty and yellow like this, what is this? Well, you know, it's the exposure to the elements over the years, you know, sometimes they get dirty. Uh, some, but you know, a lot of times this yellowing effect that we see with Super Nintendo's, NES, Game Boys, and Dreamcast, for instance, like this one, is it's a factor of oxidation you know, so oxygen and UV light exposure over time. And you get this kind of browning effect. Luckily, there's some ways of trying to restore that original, you know, gray and white sheen to these consoles. I have tried to do this over the years with multiple different things. I, my Game Boy, my, well, you know, because you're the one that restored it. My original Game Boy was pretty crusty. Mm -hmm. And I tried, I, I tried many things. I, and I know that there are some people out there that they do this with cars as well. I know cars can get oxidized from being in the sun, um, but I was never able to find anything that, that really helped at all. I mean, I, I would try and clean it, but so, so basically what you're saying is just UV light and oxidation causes this plastic to break down over the years and turn this yellow color. Now I will say though, there is a point of no return with these sometimes, right? Yeah, you know, that same kind of, those same kind of factors that change the color also start to make that plastic more brittle. My Super Nintendo that you, yes. <laughs> that you reshelled. So, uh, I don't know, you should check that video out, but uh, that Super Nintendo, it looked like it had been beaten up with a hammer. <laughs> yeah, it's seen better days. Yep. And, it, and I believe you told me that when you were taking it apart, it just kind of started to crumble. It did. So, you know, Chris wanted me to preserve where he had carved his name and his brother's name into the console. I was terrified cutting that thing out. I was so worried it was going to disintegrate in my hands. But you know, some some you know, patience and time, I was able to cut it out. Luckily, I preserved that. But yeah, these things can get quite brittle. And so, so anyway, you found some stuff that restores it back to its original color. Why don't you explain what this is? First off, what is it? Well, I mean, first of all, let me start with this. I tried different methods. We all know that hydrogen peroxide can be used to do this. So I tried several methods. One is using, you know, the stuff you use for like dyeing your hair and stuff, bleaching your hair out. That, I used to do that in the 90s. That was pretty heavy duty. Uh, then I tried submerging the consoles, you know, with the electronics taken out, of course, um, in, you know, lower percentage peroxide and just leaving it outside in the sun a little longer. Got some good effects with that. But I gotta tell you, the thing I've had the most luck with is, is this stuff right here, which is called Retrobrite. And uh, this stuff, you can, you can get it on Amazon. It's not too pricey. It has, I mean, the active ingredient is hydrogen peroxide at a certain concentration. And it has a few other things in it too as well. But I have found this to be very effective in, in, in restoring my consoles. And uh, you gotta be a little careful with it. You wanna wear gloves when you apply it um, because it, it can irritate the skin. And I would and, like uh, to say, we are not affiliated with Retrobrite in any way. Nope. Yep. But I have to say, it works really well. And so I want people to know about it so they can restore their own consoles with it. So um, basically also, maybe wear some clothes you don't care about because if this stuff gets on your clothes, uh, they're going to be, they're going to bleach spots all over it. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I would imagine that the active ingredient in this thing is probably like peroxide, right? Yes. That's the main thing on yeah. it. Yeah. All right. So explain let, let let's just i just want to show people real quick the difference here okay so this is an untreated uh sega dreamcast shell it is safe to point out that you should uh remove all of the goodies from the inside of your electronics before you try this because you don't want it getting it will corrode metal no it, it will corrode metal and so you want to get all the metal parts out of your console before you use this yeah. stuff. So don't don't go emailing us and be like, I retro brighted my <laughs> Dreamcast and now everything's rusted. Don't put it on metal. But 
Here is a original untreated Dreamcast. You know, I always thought it was so interesting when you get stuff like this. Yep. Stuff like this where it's like just one piece of the plastic has turned a different color. It, when you did my Super NES, I'm sure you noticed just like one, two of the pieces were a much crispier golden yeah. than the rest of it. Yeah. It's so strange how that happens, but ox I, I don't understand any of the oxidization of all of this, so I am no scientist. But let's take a look at, this is post- That's post retro, retro right? Look at that. I mean, look at the difference there. This is uh, untreated old crusty console. And this, is treated with retro bright. Now, what exactly is the procedure? So it's it's pretty easy. Uh, all you need basically is this stuff, or you know, we can try it with peroxide too, but something like this. And this is a gel, right? It's a gel, yeah. I'm not gonna say what the substance looks like, but it looks like something. Yeah, let's spray it right on yeah. the lens. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, like a baggie like this or saran wrap, and uh, you're going to want to put the console in that after you coat it with this stuff. So you want to get a nice even coat throughout the uh, the console, and you want to use gloves while you're doing it uh, because it's very irritating to the skin. So use gloves, evenly slather this stuff on there, and then after that, oil that baby up real good. Yeah, and then put that in your plastic bag. Lube it up and slide it on in there. Yep, and then seal it up. And there's a couple ways you can do this next. You can either do it for free by using the sun. It's a nice free thing that's out there that's there to help with this. Yeah, I don't know you've, if you've ever noticed that thing in the sky, you're not supposed to look directly at it. Yeah, I mean, at least it's not like that thing in Mario 3 that comes chasing after yeah. you, man. If it was like that, it'd be terrifying. But anyway, uh, I digress. So you wanna use that or you, what you can do is, and this is what I do because, you know, sometimes it rains, you get the elements, bugs get on it and stuff like that. What I do is I have a UV box. So I have a box that's lined with, uh, with reflective uh, surface and UV lights. And I leave that in there for a couple days. And I periodically open it, take a look at it, see where it's, where it's at. And you know, once I feel like it's to that white color again, I take it out. And then after that, you wanna thoroughly rinse it with water, get all that peroxide off. And, uh, and then after it dries, uh, you're ready to put it back together. So you should go to grandma's and get her old sunbathing reflector, you know, her visor that she used to play out like that and build a UV box out of it. Yeah, you can easy. put a UV light in there, set this in the plastic in there. And how long did you say it, it would treat it, it? It varies based on how brown it is or how yellowed it is. So sometimes it can just be a few hours. Uh, in my experience, when it's really brown, it can take a day or two sometimes to get that, uh, you know, color to turn white again, you know? So it varies. Yeah. And it works on everything. I mean, let's take a look. Look at this. I, I don't know. I guess that was probably in a controller. When that was it in happened. a controller. You can okay. see where the sun yeah, is. I mean, look at that. But you can see where this thing was exposed to the sun. You can see that. the clear mark. I mean, look, look at that right there. Yeah, right there. There's just a, it's like, there's the line right it's like there. A, it's like a suntan line. Yeah. It's like a bikini line. And then even know, around the screen, me see on. where, oh. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> so, I mean, look at that. You, you take the inside guts out. Now let's look at one that you've already treated. Look mm -hmm. at that. Look at the, I mean. It looks brand new. Look at the difference between those two. Non-retro bright, retro bright. So super easy and it works on any any plastic that you have that is, you know, getting this, this oxida oxidization? Oxidation, yeah. Oxidation. I'm not good with words either. I know a lot about video games, but. So if you have a console that is turning yellow or has turned yellow over the years, Dr. Mod suggests RetroBright. No affiliation whatsoever. Which brings us to the next section of these Dr. Mod's labs. I have an audience question. Okay. I never like to let you know ahead of time, but you guys ask these questions in the comments and I'm watching, I'm reading these comments. I'm always checking out what you guys have to say and uh, they have some questions for you. Yeah. Uh, we asked in, in a previous video what your favorite mod was. We've asked what your first mod was. And people have asked me, and, and I think I know the answer to this question, but it's worth asking. What is the most difficult mod you've ever done? 
I have to say, especially first starting out, the Xbox 360. The X, your favorite mod. It's my favorite one too. <laughs> is the Xbox, okay, so. It's a labor of love. <laughs> is the Xbox 360 mod, is it's a hardware and software mod? It's hardware and software, yeah. yeah. So there's soldering involved. There's soldering involved. Lots of soldering. Not a ton, but kind of tricky. Meticulous yes, soldering. Yes, being careful. So it's worse than the Sega uh, Saturn? Oh yeah, the Sega Saturn doesn't require really any soldering. Oh, so, geez. so it's, uh, you know, you have to tear it down, but yeah. it's, you know, no soldering. Well, I'm glad I didn't attempt the 360 mod back in the day. I feel like mm -hmm. we're really... And then, since I asked that question, I got to ask the follow-up, what's the easiest mod? Oh man, the easiest one? When people ask you like, hey, do this mod for me, what's the one where you're like, oh yeah, oh, hang on, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> I would say probably, honestly, the, the GDMU mod on, really? the, on the Dreamcast. Yeah. The Dreamcast mod? Yeah, I love doing them, yeah. That easy. one looked difficult. Ah, it's not There's difficult. no soldering involved when you take out that, the, the la disc laser and stuff? There's a little bit of soldering involved. A little bit of soldering. But it's simple, and I, I actually, I want to show people how to make one. So if you have to plug in a soldering iron, I'm out. Oh, I don't want to do it. I'm gonna change your mind on that. <laughs> I'm gonna change your mind. I, I think I think you'll see it's not Wait, so bad. Wait, are, so are, are you saying that you want to do a video doing the whole Dreamcast mod? Yeah. I would be into that. We'll do it. Maybe, maybe that should be the next episode of Dr. Mod's Lab. Maybe you should stay tuned. If you haven't seen the Dreamcast GDEMU yeah. um, disc emulator mod, the video is right here. You should check it out and don't forget to hit this subscribe button right here because you'll miss videos like the Dreamcast mod in the very near future if you don't. Wow. What are we gonna do next? Next stage. Next stage. Enjoy the journey. <laughs>